Actually, this time, I actually should be able to keep this review relatively compact for one main reason. My opinion about the Xiaomi Mi 9 is very, very definitive. And as a TLDR here, it actually already is. As a higher end tier phone with its current price, with its current value, this is maybe not just amongst the very best ones, but is the best phone at the moment. But like I said, for its price. If you're looking at the whole picture, if you are looking at the highest end tier at a no compromise phone with the best of the best qualities, then this phone might just end up being very, very good. So let me just rephrase this once again. If you're looking for best bang for your buck, this is pretty much the one phone at the moment to go for. But if you're looking at the very best at the very highest end of the top, there are other options. But let me tell you once again with a little bit more details why I think the way I do. First of all, in terms of design and build quality, I can tell you already this much, five stars in both categories for a few reasons. First of all, with 6.4 inches, this phone actually, since it's quite thin, okay, maybe also a smaller battery, feels incredibly nice in the hand, amazing ergonomics, I can easily reach the buttons. The fingerprint reader, okay, that's not the best one, but from the in-displayed ones, it's still fine, it gets the job done, you will get used to that, but it's not as good as when we had them still on the phones and not in the phones, if you get what I mean. But other than that, we have moderately sized bezels. We have, uh, in my opinion, really great solution with the notch. And yes, I know a lot of people actually said this is not the real notch because the actual notch looks a little bit different. As you can see, if I turn off the screen, you might be able to see the, the form now. And if I turn it on, it actually gets a little bit wider. I mean, this is something that I would have never noticed myself. And I have to say, I like this one a little bit more, even though it's with software tweak, but it's great. Overall, great size. Great build quality, okay, yeah, the camera protrudes and even if you have the silicone case that comes along with the phone, it still sticks out. But generally, I have to say, it feels incredible, it's easy to handle for what it is in terms of size, so great job. If I would have to complain about one thing, it's that. This is a 3300 mAh battery and the Xiaomi Mi 6 has a 3350 mAh battery and look at how much smaller it is. So, how is it possible that they could cram this size battery in the Mi 6 that is so much smaller? So I definitely would have liked to have seen a bigger battery in this one here. But this design and build is, like I said, pretty much as good as it gets, which is not quite the same for the display. Don't get me wrong, it's a lovely display, it's nice and bright, and good resolution, everything else, but this is still just 1080p. As good as it might be, I have to just give it to that. It's a super nice display, but at the highest end, I think the calibration could be a little bit more flexible, and the colors could be just a tad little bit maybe more right. But as a whole, one of the best 1080p AMOLED displays, but it's not quite flagship level. Speaker, I'm not gonna give you the demo this time, but I can tell you this, it's easily loud enough because it's actually very nice and loud, and it actually sounds quite good, it's not really tinny or something like that, rich enough, but it's a bottom firing speaker. So at the highest end, there is room for something better. Headphone jack is not in the phone, but with the dongle, obviously, and it still is amongst the very best ones in terms of volume, with flexibility because a lot of presets and so on, and still very nice sound. So here, top job. And in terms of performance, I can tell you that at the moment, this is the fastest phone that, first phone that I've used because it is using the Snapdragon 855, and it is pretty much, let's say, just once again pushing 1080p. So this phone is pretty much without any sort of lag. It is incredibly responsive. It is incredibly fast. Now, is it a big step over the 845 from last year? I would actually have to say not big enough for me to give an extra rating because as I said in my S10 review, the, the S10, if it's a Snapdragon or the Exynos version, at, and any 845 phone is on the same level in day-to-day -day use. Because it doesn't really matter these days, every phone can quickly switch between apps, be super fluid and everything. And even though this one at the moment is a little bit better than the other ones, it's not enough to kind of stand out anything more. So, once again, pretty much flawless, perfect performer. Battery life, now that's the one thing. Like I said, battery size could have been bigger, but it actually super fastly charges with about one hour. Pretty much exactly one hour for a full charge. That, that is pretty impressive. Battery life was a little bit flaky because at first I had like a super huge, great imp impression when I had it the first day without the SIM though, where I was at like almost like nine hours on Wi-Fi. I mean, in reality, it looked a little bit different after a while. And actually for the first week, I ended up at around four, maybe four and a half hours on mobile data. 
when I didn't use it for a few days, used the Xiaomi Mi 9 SE and then switched back. I actually got like five hours, if possible room for five, five and a half. So it's a little bit flaky, especially since for some reason, mobile data drain standby, especially here is a little bit heftier than usually. So I'm just gonna say super safety four and a half, but let's maybe even say an average of about five hours, maybe like eight, seven and a half on eight to Wi-Fi. Stamper, and like I said, with the Chinese ROM, I usually don't have an issue with standby rain. That's usually where it comes into the game with the global ROM for me, but this is still everything fine. Call reception was fine. Everything else was fine. Call quality was fine. So all good in that regard. About the software, I'm actually not gonna talk about it because I have to just say this. You know what MIUI looks like, but the problem is how long, because that's my little bit of an issue. With every new software update, they improve a few things and therefore cripple a few other things. Because at the moment, for some reason, brightness with a brightness app doesn't properly work. It always reverts to a very low brightness. Then, for example, notifications, they appear, but they immediately disappear again. I'm not quite sure what's up with that. So software at some point might be very good. And that's why I sometimes still change my rating from four stars to three and a half stars. At the moment, I'm once again down to three and a half because there are some annoyances. It's quite off from an Android experience because they do after all too much. But if you are okay with MIUI general, it's fine. It still gets the job done, but it's definitely fallen down from the top of the list where I usually liked it actually quite a lot. About the camera, I did actually quite a few videos about that, so check those. I did a camera review. I did a review of the stock camera app versus the Gcam app, and I also compared it with the S10. So if you wanna know what I think about it in depth, watch that one. Just as a quick one here, selfies, absolutely great. Video would also be great, but there is no stabilization out of the box, and therefore, yeah, not quite so good. Also, the microphone sound is once again for what it is as a phone, too weak. The main camera is actually super close to a flagship level, but not quite there, especially if you maybe don't use the Gcam. If you get the Gcam app, then actually in quite often scenarios, it is at around five stars, but I'm still, I still just have to give it four and a half, even though it's super close here. Video also great, depending on the stabilization, the quality, everything was actually super funny, but like I said, watch the full review here. So let me get actually now to the conclusion already. And I mean, I pretty much already tell, told you what I think, but, I think this is kind of a little bit of a mis- or there is a misconception about this phone or it is in my opinion just a little bit overrated because I heard so many people calling this a flagship killer. No, 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 no. This might be a value flagship killer, what means that it in terms of value kills Ali flagship, but it is not killing an actual flagship because a flagship still has a better display higher res, brighter, better quality, has the better speaker system, might have the better battery life, performance at the moment not really possible, and does have the, after all, generally better camera. So this is not killing anything at the highest end tier when it just comes to top of the top specs or qualities. But if value is what you're looking for, if you just want the best bang for your buck at the higher end tier, this will make so many people happy. And I've said so many people, I've seen so many people saying that, why should I pay seven, eight hundred dollars for an S10, for an Huawei, for an HEC, for an Sony? If I can get very, very close to that, some say better, but it's not really better as I just told you, for half the price. And I have to agree, at around 400, maybe 450, depending on which configuration you get, this is not the best package, but value-wise, it is a pretty much unbeatable package. So even though it's not quite the thing for me, because of one odd issue, because of the digitizer not reacting the way I wanted to with Smart Task Launch, which has nothing to do with the phone itself, I still have to just say, if it stands out in a few positions, then it is value, design, build quality, performance. Brutally good in here. And if those are the important ones for you, yes. And even by these day standards, the camera is so close that paying like two or 300 extra just for a little bit of a better camera. No. <laughs> okay, that's where I'm gonna leave it. And under 10 minutes, that is, that is compact for me. Okay, on the next step, bye.